everybody. It's Suzanne. Um, I hope you're having a good day today. Um, if you might notice, I've got my hair cut like really, really short. And it's nice and cool. I will say that. Um, this is an update. Uh, I'm so happy to say um, with the diabetes. Um, as you know, if you've watched my other videos on um, um, my diabetes, I have type 2, and I don't take shots of insulin, so that's type 1. Um, but uh, I am, I was on metformin uh, twice a day, and I am so happy to tell you that uh, I am now on it once a day. Well, here's what happened. Uh, so I was taking metformin, uh, 500 milligrams, morning and night. And um, my A1C was coming down, uh, you know, from 8 or 9, down to 7, down to 6, 6.7, 6.4. And it was kind of like hanging around uh there, 6.4, 6.7, something like that. So, um, and that was like every three months. And then, um, I had asked one, the doctor one day, I said, do people ever come off of metformin? And, um, he said, well, with diet and with exercise, um, a lot of people do, um, now, some people aren't able to, but um, everybody's situation is different. So, I'm here to give you just a little bit more hope than what you have. Um, the diet um, is so hard in the beginning. You think, oh, I got this. Uh, this is not a problem. This is, this is, I'll be all right. I'll just switch it up some and not have sugar and do all those things you're not supposed to do. Well, you find out as you're into it, I don't know, there's like so many words, boring, uh, it's not fun to not eat what you want to eat and to switch things all up and you kind of have a little fight with yourself trying to think of, well, what should I eat? What should I not eat? Well, I can't have this. I can't have that. Well, I have to uh, give this up, and I have to give that up. And, you know, it it's just being too hard on yourself. And I'm here to tell you, don't be too hard on yourself. Okay, so just start. Say, I'm going to give up sugar, white sugar. Okay, so give up the white sugar, and then... If you like to sprinkle white sugar on top of your cereal, choose another cereal that you don't have to do that with so that you could still have your cereal in the morning, but you don't have to sprinkle a whole bunch of white sugar on it in order to make it sweet and eat it. So figure out something, um, oatmeal that's a little bit of brown sugar, and then you can switch it up with the honey. And I've got some videos out there on... Uh, raw honey, that's the best for you. So, little by little, and I will say this takes months, but little by little, start taking one thing out and adding uh, another thing. Like, I'll give you an example. Don't have any white sugar, white granulated sugar, but allow yourself to have honey. Not every day, but, you know, now and then. Um, don't buy a uh, Snickers bar or Three Musketeers candy bar or something like that. But buy yourself like a little bit of chocolate and um, like put that in the refrigerator and then break off a little piece. Not every day, but just do it um, just as a little treat. And you can just say like, uh, don't eat a whole candy bar though, just a little piece of it. So this way, you're not giving it up, like, entirely, but you are giving things up, like white sugar. I never have white sugar, and that's been for a while. So the being strict on yourself is like having your six meals a day. Three 
that would be breakfast, lunch, and supper, and then three snacks. So that's a total of six. But a snack might be um, crackers and peanut butter, or um, graham crackers, or, um, uh, you know, like a fruit. Um, fruit, I wouldn't eat a lot of fruit all at once. You know, in the beginning, I would just have a fruit now and then, but don't have a lot of fruit. And, um, but, you know, have an apple or have a, have an orange or, orange will make your sugar go up, though. Orange makes the glucose go up. So, um, you know, but you can have a peach or you can have some pineapple or something. A uh, fruit of your choice, let's put it that way. And there's a lot of good fruits out there and then some not so good. Um... Grapes don't work for me. Um, they'll make my sugar go up. And so you find out and and have your little testing uh, glucometer available so that you can figure out how you feel like after you eat or before you eat. And then you'll know it's time to eat. It's time to have a snack. You know, have your breakfast in the morning. Then have a snack mid-morning. Have your lunch have a snack in the afternoon, have your supper, and a snack at night. So you're never like without food. And um, a snack can be some carrots and celery. It, it can be a vegetable, raw vegetable. Um, I do raw vegetables a lot, so that's a snack for me. So um, for two and a half years now, um, I've, um, you know, gotten myself on, di on the right diet and, um, exercise. So exercise, as you get, as you're younger, it's a little bit easier. As you're older, it's a little bit harder because you might have a sciatic or back problems or whatever. And the other way that it's um, hard is if you're uh, quite a bit overweight. Um, I was overweight, but I lost uh, 20 pounds. And then it was like closer to what I should weigh. And, you know, all total I lost 40 pounds. But um, I was overweight. And when it is, when you are overweight, it is hard to, to exercise and stuff. A 1,200 calorie diet, if you don't cheat on it, will have you lose weight. So you can lose weight quickly on a 1,200 calorie diet. And... Um, you can talk that over with your doctor and a dietitian, but um, your breakfast is maybe 300 calories, your lunch is maybe 300 calories, and your supper is maybe 400 calories, and you can find things that are uh, no calories. Um, but uh, the thing about, like, the must-give-ups are white sugar and pop. And... Um, or soda, um, it's got sugar in there. So anything that's got sugar in, and read the back of the label, but anything that's got sugar in, you want to avoid. So <clears throat> uh, some people can drink Diet Pop. I cannot, but um, I just do water, and now and then I'll have uh, juice. But uh, orange juice, if your sugar goes down, and it, you know, it, like sugar goes up and down according to what we eat. But if your sugar goes down, orange juice always brings it up. So if your sugar is up already and you have more orange juice, it's just going to bring it higher. And then you won't feel good. You'll get a headache. And then when the headache, when the sugar comes down, you, you'll plummet down. And you won't feel good. And then you might get an upset stomach. And so it's good to know what works for you. Make yourself a, a menu. Write it down. Uh, do one week at a time, so where you have, when you go grocery shopping, you've got like six, seven different kinds of menus for different weeks, for the whole week. So, uh, and you can buy the um, uh, frozen dinners, like the Weight Watcher or the Lean Cuisine and things like that. You can buy some of them, but then you also have to look at the uh, sodium in there, because sodium will have you retain your weight. So, but... Just look at the calories, look at the sodium and the sugar, and you'll figure out foods that work for you. And like myself, I have diverticulitis also. So 
um, when you're when that's in a flare-up situation because you've eaten the wrong food, I suffer a little bit. So I know because of that, like not to have things that irritate that. So it's just knowing yourself and knowing your body and then figuring out what works, what you can have. So um, I've got my A1C down to 6.1. Now the normal, if you're not diabetic, your normal <clears throat> A1C should be 5.7 or thereabouts. 5.7, 5.6, 5.8, something like that. If it's in that range, you're considered, you know, in normal range. And if you're pre-diabetes, um, and this is where they put you on metformin, or they'll tell you, um, start working with your diet and changing up your diet. And if that doesn't work, um, they'll put you on metformin. So pre-diabetes, your A1C should be 5.7 to 6.4. And if you fall in that range, they'll consider yourself as your pre-diabetic, meaning you've got to exercise, watch what you eat, and see if you're overweight. And if you are overweight, um, lose some pounds, and then you'll maybe get out of that pre-diabetes stage. Now, uh, to be diabetic, your A1C has got to be 6.4 or greater. And that's where I was before. I was 6.4, 6.7, and I was on metformin, like I said, twice a day. So um, now it's down to 6.1. And um, about a year ago, my oldest son, he also um, is um, taking metformin because his um, A1C was up and they determined that he was pre-diabetic and um, he's worked with his diet, lost some weight, and his A1C is now down to 6.0. So you, it can be done. I'm, I just want to give you hope that it can be done. It takes a little while, it, it, you know, not all in one month or one week or anything like that. It takes a little while to figure out what foods you like what foods like you, and um, uh, then just work with your A1C and your check your glucometer. Now, my glucometer, in the morning, it's like 110 to 120, and that's fasting. And it shouldn't be really that high, but it is. And um, it, it should be right around 100, uh, closer to 100. Every now and then I'll get it down to 107 or 109, but it doesn't stay like that. It just keeps, and that's in the morning, just after getting up, not having anything yet to eat or drink. It's like 110 to 120, 114, 117, 120, 110. It's just all over the place like that. So um, I'm, I'm still on metformin once a day, but um, it's not my, my, uh, my glucometer, when I, uh, I test my, do a test for yourself, too. Do a, a after-you-eat two-hour test, a before-you-eat. Um, do a test and write it down in a little book, in a little notebook, and see where you run. Um, I have never, when testing myself in the two and a half years, even in the beginning, I've never been above 170, and that's after eating. So your insulin will go up like when you eat because it needs to um, help you to digest your food. And insulin is what helps food break down. So, and that's released with the pancreas. So um, when you eat, you, you will test higher, but then you should come down after that um, because you no longer need insulin anymore you've eaten and, and your food is processed and digested and you really shouldn't really need a whole lot. So it shouldn't be 170 anymore. It is like right after eating, but then after that it should come down. And this is where your head gets kind of foggy sometimes, meaning that it's not like you have a headache, 
but you just don't feel right sometimes. Your sugar is up and down and up and down, and that's why I always have crackers. Saltines, Ritz, the um, club crackers, um, any, any little cracker, like four of them, and you'll feel better. Okay, so my A1C is down to 6.1%, which is good, and I want to get it down to uh, under 6. That's my next goal my, when I have my next um, check up. I'm hoping it is under six and at some point in time not making any high demands on myself but at some point in time I hope I can get off metformin. Wouldn't that be sweet? Sweet, sweet, sweet. That would be so great. But um, I just want to tell you that don't give up. Just um, do a variety of things. Things that will work for you. Um, Choose the foods that work for you. Test yourself um, and see where your um, what your glucometer is telling you. Um, at night, mine just dips right down. It can go down as far as 79 sometimes. And that's the reason why I don't have to take the metformin at night anymore because it just goes too low. And it should be somewhere between 80 and 100. That would be normal. But if it's getting down into the 70s, then you're going to be, um, so it's hyperglycemic and hypoglycemic. So uh, hyper is over, like think of a child that's hyperactive. Uh, hyperglycemia is overactive sugar. And hypo, just think like a hypodermic. It goes under the skin, a hypodermic needle. So hypo is you're under hypoglycemia. So you're under the level that you should be. So, and that's what was happening to me. Um, taking the metformin twice a day, morning and night. At night, it would just go too low. And I didn't feel good for the longest time. I would get up in the middle of the night. I would throw up. I would, If I didn't throw up, I would at least be sick to my stomach. And I did this for, for months. And then finally, when I went to the doctor, um, my A1C is down. So she said, you don't need to take the metformin anymore. So just skip the nighttime dose. So now my nighttime, uh, when I test myself, maybe 7 or 8 o'clock at night, uh, I haven't eaten since supper, since maybe 5 o'clock. So I'll test myself, and it's down to 100, 104, <clears throat> uh, no more than 109, but... It's right around 100, so 104, and that's at night. Now, that will have me sleep through the night. I don't wake up where I'm sweaty. Or I don't wake up um, sick to my stomach or anything like that. And um, so that was what why I was so sick there for a long time. And <clears throat> it was taking the metformin morning and night was just too much. So that's why I'm happy to tell you I only have to take it in the morning now, once a day, 500 milligrams, and my hope is to get off of that. Like, this year would be so cool, but if it takes longer, I'll work with it. So I want, just work with it. Just uh, do the things, get more into the raw vegetables, and get more into eating vegetables, um, less the fruit and or carbohydrates, things like bread, um, rice, Rice doesn't work well for me, but if you can take a little bit of rice, um, see how that works for you. I just stay away from it entirely now. I used to have it a whole lot more often, and I never could figure out why I didn't feel good. And rice is one of the things. Bread. Bread is another thing that just kills me. And I love potatoes. I could eat. There isn't a potato that I don't love. Sweet, white, fries, mashed, home fries, hash browns. And baked any potato you want to make me. I love potatoes, but I only have potatoes on Sunday now because potatoes make, um, you know, it's uh, it'll make sugar. It's a starch, and starch makes sugar. So any starchy food, your body processes it into sugar. So and that's what you don't want. But you can have a little. So on Sunday, I have a little potato. And not all Sundays. Uh, sweet potatoes are less uh, harmful. Uh, so 
I do have sweet potato one Sunday, white potato another Sunday, and some Sundays I don't have any potato, but I do love potatoes. But um, they're not exactly our best friend as diabetics. But um, anyway, exercise. I up the exercise. Um, I have a treadmill, but um, if the weather's nice outside, I'll get outside and walk. So walk around the block, walk up and down the driveway, go walk at the mall, walk in the park, find a place that you like to walk that's safe, and walk. And, um, like, I started out on the treadmill, and I couldn't do 45 minutes or an hour. So just do 15 minutes or, or a half an hour. Just do what you can do, but don't, do, don't not do it. Do something, 15 minutes, a half an hour, on rainy days or cold days or what, what the weather, go by the weather wherever you are. And um, on nicer days or days it's, uh, it, it's nice for you, get out and walk. Walk up and down the driveway, walk around the block, walk in the park. You know, you don't have to run five miles and you don't have to kill yourself. You can just walk for 15 minutes or half an hour. If you want to walk for more, walk for more time. And if you don't, then just at least walk 15 minutes or a half an hour and just find a place that's easy walking. If you don't want to walk every day, five days a week, then walk Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Walk on the days that works for you and incorporate that into your um, you know, daily routine. And so on my walking, I've upped my walking, and that's another thing that's helped me to lose weight. I stay around 1,200 calorie diet, 15 or 16, 1,400 calorie. I stay around there. I don't eat any fast foods. Those are up in 2,000 and 3,000 calories um, if you do that. Um, so I really haven't gone anywhere. Uh, Burger King, McDonald's, all them great places to go if you don't have to, you know, watch what we eat. But I stay, I just more or less... Um, don't go there. So, um, not to say that you can't, it's just go there less, but those are high calorie foods. So if, uh, you do go out, like have a salad or if you go out to uh, dinner or lunch with, with a friend or whatever, um, have a salad or whatever and, um, something, um, uh, that, that's going to work good for you. Um, and you'll know, that's why I said before, Find the foods that work for you, that don't make your sugar go re, you know, real high, and stay away from the things that do make your sugar go high. So, breads is one of them, but uh, for me. So, it just gets processed into starch. Flour, any of that, it gets processed for me into starch, and um, starch is sugar, and sugar is fat. So it's, it's real easy um, once you figure it all out. And it takes a little while. And it is, you know, you, you got to figure out the foods that to stay away from. And when you check your glucometer, you'll know because your sugar will be way too high. And you'll say, no, I can't do that. Even things like Cheerios. You know, I checked my glucometer once after eating Cheerios, and it was, like, way up there, like 160, I can't remember now, 160, 150, it was real high just after eating a little bowl of cereal. So, um, and that was uh, Cheerios. So, I love Cheerios, but I just stick with, uh, shred the um, rice, the wheat chocks, rice chocks, raisin bran, um, I just stick with things like that. So, and I don't eat a whole lot of cereal because sometimes I'll have oatmeal, and um, so I switch that up. Sometimes I just have rye, a uh, rye toast, um, one, and uh, sometimes I'll have a, an English muffin. But it's not like every day. Like I haven't had an English muffin in like three months. But sometimes I will have one. So. That's what I mean. You don't have to, like, give up everything. You just have to, like, just have it once in a while. So have your English muffin. Just don't have it every day. Have your bagel. Just don't have it every day. Have your toast or your rye bread. Just not every day. And um, I don't know. It's been a couple years since I've had a donut or anything like that. Those are, like, not, 
not an option. But anyway, I just wanted to tell you, if you're on metformin or something else, if you work with diet, exercise, those are the two things, diet and exercise, they'll give you your weight loss, they'll give you the sugar that's going to come down, they'll give you that. If you just do diet, um, and I don't mean go on a diet, if you just watch what you eat and um, up your activity. I'm not going to say exercise because I'm not saying do sit-ups or push-ups or pull-ups. or I'm not saying that. I'm just saying move around, even put your um, stereo on and uh, jump around the room if you have to. You know, get a jumping rope and jump rope or do something to up your activity. And walking is really good because walking, if you're overweight, just walk a short distance. As you lose the weight, you'll be able to further your distance. And um, so uh, even like, you know, weighing like 140 or, you know, somewhere up to between 140 and 150, you're still able to walk. You're not able to run 5 miles or 10 miles, but you are able to walk. And then, um, it, you know, it all works, Just but just do a little bit. And on Sunday, I don't do anything. So, you know, Monday through Friday, I, I try to get out there and walk. And if I want to on Saturday, that's fine. But Saturday and Sunday, usually not too much. But Monday through Friday, as much as I can. And that's basically what I want to tell you. Just don't give up. Don't think that you can't do it because you can do it. If I can do it, anybody can do it. But you just have to work with it and find out and get a notebook and write things down and also write yourself down a menu so that when you go shopping, you can buy like spinach and, and, the, and salads and, and you can make, you know, like a lot of places sell the uh, chicken already roasted. Throw that on top of your salad, some avocado, some olive, whatever you want, onion, red onion. But whatever you want, however you like it, fix it up, and I put it on a big dinner plate. I'll put salad on there, and then I'll put some chicken that I had gotten that was already roasted. Um, that lasts, like, for a few days. And then I throw anything else on top of there that you like, cheese. You know, feta cheese is good. I love that. But, um, and you can have that, like, you know, a couple times a week. That can be your supper. And you fill your plate up and put meat on top of it. You know, it's, that's a lot of food. But, um, anyway, I just wanted to tell you, don't give up. You can get your A1C down to 6.1, just like I did. And here's this thing here. Tells you um, when you go have your blood work done, your hemoglobin is your A1C. So you can get that down. Um, and you know, it, it'll take you a while to figure it all out because we don't like the same foods. But um, I just wanted to give you that update that you can meet your goal, um, set a goal, and you can meet that goal. And it's not that hard. It's it's actually, I look back now and I think, you know, I could have done this a lot sooner. Somebody would have just told me. It's really not that hard. And, yes, if you're like 300 pounds or 400 pounds or 500 pounds or 600 pounds, yes, you'll have to work at it a little bit harder than I do. But you'll also, you'll lose a lot of weight, too, more than I will. Um, people that are... Um, that much overweight, you can drop 40 pounds in a month, where it might take me all year to drop 40 pounds. So um, you can do it, though, so little by little, and then um, you can conquer this. Have faith, trust in yourself, trust in God, but have faith, and you can figure this all out. Talk to your doctor, talk to a dietitian, get yourself some help to figure, help you figure it out. And good luck, and I hope you can get your A1C down too. And message me below 
Uh, let me know if you have got your A1C down too, or if you were on metformin and now you take uh, maybe like I started out twice a day and now I only take once a day. And let me know um, your experiences um, help others to read your comments and um, let us know how you did and stuff. And I do hope you and pray that you meet your goals. And with that, uh, please subscribe to my channel. At, give me a like on, on the video. And look for my new cham channel. It's going to be an inspiration devotional channel. And um, August 1st, I'll be starting back with making soaps again. Um, humidity should be less then. And um, soaps don't do so good when the humidity is high. So I usually take some of the summer off. But August 1st, I'll start making soaps again. And um, so good luck. And let me know how you're doing right in the comments below. And uh, have a great day.